Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now in today's video, I want to talk about a character who I've always felt has been immensely underutilized in the film series. Today we're going to be talking about one of Jurassic Park's greatest villains. Jurassic Park is a film series with a pretty interesting cast of human villains. If you go by what we see up on the big screen, characters like Dennis Nedry, Peter Ludlow, and Vic Hoskins are pretty set in their ways and they don't really have any sort of depth outside of achieving their own personal goals. For Peter Ludlow, it was climbing up the company ladder. For Vic Hoskins, it was weaponizing the engine Raptors. And of course, for Dennis Nedry, well, he just wanted a whole lot of money. But now, when it comes to the Jurassic Park novels, well, that's where you get a whole lot more characterization and introduction to who these guys are and where it is that they're coming from. And by far, the greatest of these villains has to be from these books. His name was Lewis Dodson. And while he was in fact featured very briefly in the original film, he never got any sort of follow-up on the character after that brief appearance in Costa Rica. So Dodson is obviously the man that hired Dennis Nedry. He's paying him to smuggle some of Injun's dinosaur embryos off of the island so that his own company, Biosyn, will be able to reverse engineer these assets and use them for their own business endeavors. In the film, they never... Re In the film, they never really name the company that Dodson is coming from, but they do make it clear that they are indeed a rival to Injun. Now, if you haven't read the novels, you're probably asking yourself why this guy is so special. He didn't really do anything that dangerous in the movie after all, and in fact, he's only in it for like a single scene. Well, in the books, his backstory and actions are pretty terrible to say the least. You see, controversy has always dogged Lewis Dotson's career. Even back to when the man was a graduate student at Hopkins, he got dismissed for planning human gene therapy without the FDA's permission. Later, he'd join up with Biosyn, and soon conduct a controversial rabies vaccine test in Chile. The reason this rabies vaccine in particular was so controversial was due to his test subjects never being informed that they were being tested on. Dodson was a man that didn't really care for the safety and well-being of others. He was well known within the company and even the head of Biosyn himself didn't like being around him. Most of Dodson's work was really the result of stealing what someone else had already done, which is exactly what he was trying to do in the original Jurassic Park. And by the way, this wouldn't be the only time that he tried to steal Injun's technology in the novel canon. Apart from paying Dennis Nedry the money to steal the dinosaur embryos, Dodson had also tried to get a Daiichi marriage broker to do the same thing. Biosyn even tried to buy Injun when they went Chapter 11, but the Japanese investors whom Hammond had impressed in the past refused to sell. By the time we get to the events of Crichton's The Lost World, Dodson was on the company's last straw with acquiring Injun Tech. It's here where Lewis Dodson suggests that stealing their rival's dinosaurs might be a genuinely great idea for the future of the company for a number of different reasons. First and foremost being animal testing. People would usually protest the ethical treatment of animals, but if the company were able to say that they'd actually created a particular animal, well, then they could do whatever they want with it. They made it. They patented it. They own it. Dodson's final pitch to steal the engine dinosaurs was made with the promise that the troubles of working with living animals would soon be a thing of the past for Biosyn. Big game hunters can't shoot lions or elephants the same way their grandfathers did. Now, it's a much more serious crime for someone to shoot a tiger than it is to shoot their own parents. Tigers have advocates. But imagine a specially stocked hunting preserve filled with tyrannosaurs and triceratops. Imagine one of those heads on a wealthy person's wall. The opportunities for Biosyn were literally endless. But of course, all of these ideas required one thing, that he successfully steal and utilize Injun's assets. And Dawson was willing to do whatever it took to meet this endgame. In the book, he even tries to murder Sarah Harding by throwing her over the bow of the boat that they'd all taken to Isla Sorna. Miraculously, she survived. But make no mistake, that wasn't what Dotson was hoping for. This character is definitely the most villainous person in the entire franchise. Now, most of his attributes were given to Eli Mills in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but even that murderous character is much more tame when compared to what Dodson was capable of. Now, of course, Dodson's death and role as primary antagonist of The Lost World were given to Peter Ludlow in the second movie, but the character, as far as we know, still lives on in the film universe. Having gotten away from the 1993 incident at Jurassic Park and not really being heard of since, I personally think the character would make a great addition to the upcoming Jurassic World sequel. 
mainly because of how awesome it would be to tie in Bios and Sabotage, which Nedry carried out in the first movie, full circle with the rest of the series. While we do see this guy very briefly in the original film, Lewis Dodson really is the greatest Jurassic Park villain that we never got to see. And I think they could really utilize him well for the final entry in the trilogy. Right now, there's just one major problem I currently see them going up against, and that would be that they'd have to recast the actor in order to get Dodson into the movie. This is because the original actor, Cameron Thor, was recently sentenced to six years in prison for giving an aspiring 13-year-old actor marijuana before performing a lewd act on a child. So yeah, he ain't gonna be in the movie. It's really a shame that Dodson was never utilized in the film series properly before in the past. I think it would be a really good idea to recast the character and bring him back for a future installment. But in short, they definitely need to stay as far away from Cameron as they possibly can. Now, if only Crichton's character could come back in some other sort of way without that actor's reputation bagging down the role. If they could possibly do that, I think we'd get the greatest villain in the film series by far. Now as always, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my awesome game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Their continued support has really been a lot of help to me when making this stuff, and I never want them to ever forget it. So a big thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you on the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.